Okay, folks, finals review time. Perform the indicated operation, round at two decimal places if needed. Now, this is called a complex fraction, okay? So you want to put your own parentheses on top, and you can put it on bottom, but there's only one number there, I wouldn't, okay? And then I go parentheses 6 times parentheses 21 minus 7. You'll need a double parentheses then, and then divided by 21. I got 4 equals 4. Okay, now I have a complex fraction right here in the middle. I'm going to figure that out first. I'm going to put a parentheses here and then right there. I need to get rid of that complex fraction first. So parentheses 83 plus 16 minus 51, parentheses, then divide that by 8 and you get 6. So cross out that complex fraction and replace it with 6 and then you can just go to your calculator. 47 minus 6 plus parentheses 13 plus 5. And I get 59. Okay, now you have a little diagram here. Determine the number of board feet in the piece of lumber using this formula. The number of board feet you need in that piece of lumber is found by taking the thickness, which is T, that's in inches, that's why there's two quotations after it, times the width in inches, okay, times the length in feet, because you just see one uh, apostrophe after the L, that's because that's feet, and then divided by 12. Okay, so basically I need to just plug in numbers and evaluate. So the thickness is this 3 here. That's how thick your board is, so 3. And the width is across, okay, right there. That's going to be 10. And then the length is the um, feet that we have, which is 15, divided by 12. So again, complex fraction, just evaluate. Okay, 37.5, 37 that means you'll need, yeah, you put 37.5 because you could get half of a board foot. And by the way, label that board feet, B-D-F-T, board feet. Okay, now you get kind of the same idea, a complex fraction, put your own parentheses around it, and you just plug in the fractions instead of the whole numbers. So you got 7, ABC1, ABC8, times parentheses, and then 6, ABC7, ABC8, subtract 4, and 3 sixteenths. Okay, make two parentheses to close it, and then we divide by four and three fourths. Okay, and I come up with four and one thirty second. Okay, now the next one, I don't see any complex fractions. There are fractions, but you don't have any complex ones, okay, where you have more than one value on top or bottom. So you can just go ahead and plug that in. Remember, a brace is like a parentheses, so ten and nine tenths times, remember when I get to a brace, it's like a parentheses, Five, 15 and 7 sixteenths times parentheses 2 ABC3 plus 5 ABC6, and then close up parentheses, minus 3 and 3 tenths, close, use a parentheses to do the brace, and then divide it by 2 and 1 half. Okay, I come up with this little thing right here. You, if they give you a decimal, just write it, but round it to two decimal places. Throughout this thing, you're going to round to 86.57, and it would stay 57 because there's a 3 after it. Okay, electrical resistance. Here you have a circuit right here. R1, R2, and R3 are individual resistances and in ohms for the circuit given. Determine the total resistance, it's called R of T, there's R of T, in ohms for the circuit shown using the formula. So we've got to find the total resistance. So R1 down here is 120. That's not part of the fraction, though. Now we get into a fraction, it's R2 times R3, so it would be 50 times 85. And on bottom, R2 plus R3, so it would be 50 plus 85. So first I'm going to get rid of this complex fraction here. Put parentheses on top and bottom on that one. 
because you have an operation on the bottom. You got to use parentheses to ensure that it will do that operation before anything else. So it will find the top and bottom at the same time and divide them. Okay, thirty-one point four eight, and then just add those together, and that's going to be one hundred and fifty-one point four eight. Now the label for that is ohms. Okay, that's your total resistance. Okay, so look at the picture, use the formula. Okay, express each of the following fractions as decimals around two places if needed. To make a fraction a decimal, you just divide 33 by 64, around two places. So 33 divided by 64. Okay, 0 0.51, it would go to 0 0.52 because there's a 5. If there's a 5 or bigger, you have to round the second decimal up, so 0 0.52. Okay, now if you get a mixed number and you need to make that into a decimal, first you're going to take 8 divided by 15. 0 0.53. Don't write the repeating sign around it. Now don't put 0. Instead of putting 0, you're going to put a 4 there. So 4.53. Okay, expressed as reduced fractions. So you need fractions and they need to be reduced to simplest terms. So after the decimal, you see the 58. Now, what place value is the last digit? And you got your tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So 58 over 1,000. And then you can either divide by a common factor or you can just do ABC on your calculator and you get 29 over 500. So essentially, those have both been divided by 2. Okay, now after the decimal, you got 625. That makes the number 625. And then I have the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. So it's 100,000. Now simplify that. Again, if you didn't have a calculator, if you didn't have the ABC function, you would start by dividing them both by 5, and then you would see what you can do from there. But that's 1 over 160. Okay. This is the same as this. This is just in simple, it's simpler form. Okay, more operations. Well, first off, just like you would with a complex fraction, we want to get rid of that square root. So I'm going to punch in the square root second and then the key next to the 7 and then 2.85 minus 1.06. It'll be easier if you just do it that way. Close the parentheses and we'll go 1.34. Now that's gone, and all I have to do is divide. So 8.18 divided by 1.34, 6.10. It'd stay at 1, 0 because there's a 4 after it. Okay, now we have an interesting scenario here. We have a complex fraction within a root. First, we're going to parenthesize the top and the bottom and get rid of the complex fraction. Now, that little 2 is, is 6.5 to the second power. So we got parentheses 8.63 times 5.1, close it, divided by the parentheses 6.5 to the second, minus 0 0.59, close that one. And we have 1.05, but it would go to 0 0.6 because of the rounding. So I cross that out and write 1.06. Now I find the cubed root of 1.06. So to do a cubed root, to do any other, a higher than a square root, you punch in the number, then second, but you don't hit the key next to the 7. You hit the caret button, okay? Because hitting the key next to the second will mean it's three times the square root of this. I don't want that. I just want the cubed root of it. Okay, so 1.02. Boom. Okay, I expressed each ratio in reduced fraction form. So down there is my reduced fraction. First, I'm going to make this into a fraction. It's 35 over 10. And then reduce it, but you end up with a problem. You get a mixed number, but that's not a ratio. So what you need to do is circle the bottom number because you're going to use that same bottom on your reduced fraction, and then you're going to make this into an improper fraction. You're going to take your whole number times the bottom and plus the top. 
So 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So 7 over 2. Okay, another one, 52 over 16. And you're going to have to do this thing here, this times and add, whenever the top number is bigger than the bottom. And we'll ABC it first so it can reduce it. But then we need to put that into an improper fraction. So we got 4, that's my bottom, and then I take the whole number times 4, and then plus 1. 3 times 4 is 12, 12 plus 1 is 13, 13 over 13 to 4. Essentially, if you see, if I divide that by 5 and that by 5, it's 7 to 2. If I divide each one of these by 4, that's 13 and that's 4. But it's hard to know what they can divide by. So solve the proportion, just cross, multiply, and divide. So 6.2 times 9.8 divided by 21.7, 2.8. F equals 2.8. Okay, number 16. The machine bolt shown has a thread pitch of 1 32nd of an inch. So every one of those pitches right there, the pitch is a distance between two adjacent threads or the thickness of one thread. So like there's a thread, see that little up, down, it's like a V, that represents a thread. Every one of those is 1 32nd of an inch. Find the number of threads if this whole thing is 2 and 3 quarters inches. Well, this is a division problem. You take what you have, two and three quarters, the whole, divide it into the parts that each represents, one over 32. That'll tell you how many threads there are. So two, ABC three, ABC four, divided by one, ABC 32, and I got 88. So it'll be 88 threads within that. Now you're like, that doesn't look like there's 88. Yeah, but it cuts it so it doesn't show the whole picture because that would be a long picture. Whenever it's cut in the middle means that's one end, that's the other end. There's a whole bunch in the middle that are unknown. Okay, express each decimal as a percent. Now when you do a percent, you want to move the decimal twice to the right. Two right. So one and then two, fill in with a zero. And that's 470%. Okay, two to the right. One, two. So I got a decimal. We got zero in front and then 0.32%. So there can still be a decimal in the per within the percent, but you still got to move it so that you get it to a percent. Now you have a percent and you're getting back to a decimal, so that would be two to the left. So one, two. If you don't have anything in front, put zero. So 0 0.125, and then the percent sign is now can't dropped, and it's just a regular decimal. Same thing here. I know this looks kind of funky. You still move it two to the left once, twice. Put a zero in front if there's nothing there. 0 0.0034, and the percent is now dropped from the problem. Now it's been converted to a decimal. Okay, express each percent as a fraction. Well, first to make it a fraction, you start with it over 100, okay? Because a percent is actually a fraction, it's just over 100. 35 ABC, and then reduce it, 7 twentieths. Each of those have been divided by 5. Okay, now the next one. Put it over 100. So it's four and one fourth. Now, you can either leave it like that or you can do the or. You can do the four and take four times four and add one. So I'll accept either one of those answers. They're both good answers. Okay, what percent of 24 is 18? So we're going to use proportions here percent on top and then you got the part over the base. Now the base is defined by the word of and the parts defined by the word is. You got to remember that. So I don't have the percent it says what percent. So x and after the word of I have 24. That's your base and then 18 is your part. You got to find what percent that is. So I take 100 times 18 divided by 24 I got 75, 75%. OK, 
Okay, what is 40%? There's a percent sign there. The staple got in the way. What is 40% of 90? Okay, so part over base. Okay, so part is of, base is of, and the part is, is, always. Okay, 40%, you got 40, and after of, you got 90, and then you don't have the is, so that'd be x, that's what you're looking for. So you take 40 times 90 divided by 136, okay? So X is 36. That one doesn't have a percent sign. We have the percent. We're just finding what would go over 90 to make it 40%. 72.4% of 212.5. Okay, so 724 part base. So the part is is, then of is the base. Okay, so after of, we have 212.7, and then X would be the part. So I take 72.4 times 212.7 divided by 100, and that's 153 rounded 0.99, and it would stay 0.99 too, because there's a 4 in the thousands place. Now, if it says of and then what, then you put X right there, okay? But we, I should have put one like that. I shouldn't have had those two line up the same, but we'll fix it in the coming days. Form the indicated operation. A couple ways you can do it. You can plug it in, negative 4 times 10 plus 7, negative 2. It's negative 54. You could also do it like this. You would do your, you would multiply these, and that'd make negative 40. Multiply those, negative 14. You always multiply before adding, as long as there's no, and it's not within a parenthesis. And you add those, you get negative 54. Same way. Okay, number 27. You can plug it in, negative 6 plus 3, close it, and then raise it to the fourth power, caret 4, 81. You could also simplify the parentheses first, so that would be negative 3. Now when you plug in the power, you want to get it, make sure it goes in parentheses, because negative 3 times negative, it would just be 4 negative 3's multiplied, 81. Okay, now fifth root of negative 32. So to get to a fifth root, I hit 5 and then second caret, not, the ne not next to the 7, second caret, negative 32. So that's negative 2. And that makes sense, because if I take negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, it's negative 32. So it's like the opposite of an exponent when you do a root. Okay, negative 6 times 2, I see that's a complex fraction, so we'll... So I go negative 6 plus 2, close it, divided by negative 5 to the second power. Negative 0.16. That makes sense, because if I simplify that, that's negative 12. If I simplify the power, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. And when I divide negative 12 by 25, I get negative 0 0.16. Okay, determine the maximum and the minimum values. Well, this is really easy. Max, min. Well, I'm probably going to add to get the maximum. 40.021 and I'm probably going to subtract to get the minimum. Forty point zero one nine. Now you apply this to a couple of scenarios. Find the degree of precision in the range for the measurement 8.7 inches. Now, you might probably need a reminder how to do this. Here's how you do the degree of precision. This digit, you make a decimal. This digit right there turns to a 1, and anything before it turns to a 0. So that's your degree of precision. Now, here's the range. Okay. You take 8.7, and then you add and subtract. 
whatever this divided by 2 is, because this is with all in that, okay? So I'm going to put divide by 2, circle that answer so you know that that's the answer for part A, but then we divide it in half to find what we're going to add, 0 0.05 to find the range. Do your minimum first, okay? So 8.65 is the minimum. And put a dash, and then your maximum, you add. It's going to be 8.75. Okay, so degree of precision, you turn the last digit to a 1, everything before it becomes a 0. Find the minimum, maximum, you take what it's supposed to be, the measurement itself, then add or subtract half of that by dividing by 2. Okay, the specifications for the length of a part is 5.5 inches. What's the least width that would be acceptable for the part? Now, this is this applied. You might read it and you're like, how the heck do you do it? Well, it's essentially this. Now, you want to find the least acceptable width, so you want to subtract. Now, what do you subtract? Well, you do what you're doing here. Turn that to a 1, everything else to a 0, then divide that by 2. Divide it in half. It's going to be just like that was 0 0.05. That's my answer. It's essentially the same process here. You don't need to find the maximum, though. You just find the minimum. Anytime they ask for a range, you've got to find the minimum and the maximum. Make a dash, but just the least amount, just find the minimum. 5.45. Okay. Express each value as indicated doing unit conversions. That's where the sheet comes into play. By the way, these are the only four, the, well, time down here when you'll need it. Linear measurement, that's that's just feet, inches, yards, feet, and all that. Now, units of area, that's your square units, square feet, square inches. There's even acres and things like that. You also have your cubic, cubic feet, cubic inches. And you also have linear measurements from your metric system. And I need to add something down here. There are 10 millimeters, mm equals 1 centimeter. And you got your time, 60 minutes to an hour, 60 seconds to one minute. Okay, so we're going to first, 6.25 feet is yards. So you got 6.25 feet over one times. And you want to get feet, use feet and yards. So feet's here, so it goes to the bottom, and then yards on top. So up here, one yard is three feet. Make sure you put the one with the yards, the three with the feet. The feet cancel, and that leaves you with the yard label. Put parentheses and then go from there. So we have 16.25 times 1 divided by 1 times 3. Round to two decimal places, 5.41, but it would go to 5.42 because 6 is higher than 5. Okay, 1 twelfth of a mile is yards. Remember, don't put an equals. This is not cross, multiply, divide. It's multiplying. So we put 1 12th right there, mile, and then just 1, and we want miles and yards. So I need miles and yards. Miles is on top, so it's got to go on the bottom here, and then yards over it. So look up miles and yards right there, 1 miles, 1,760 yards. You can get rid of your miles labels, and now you just have yards. So really all you have to do is 1 12th times 1 7 60. If you have nothing but 1's on the bottom, you can do that, but it's kind of a waste of time on your calculator. 880 yards. Okay, 4.08 square feet is square miles, so 4.08. SQ feet over 1. We need square feet and square inches. So square feet's here, so we transfer it down here. 
and square inches. Now you're to the square units, so you got to look up square inches and square foot. It's the first one square foot is 144 square inches. You can now get rid of your square feet with square inches being the label we have left, which is what we want. So 4.08 times 144, and that's going to be 587.52. Okay, 4,700 cubic inches to cubic yards. So we got 4,700 cubic inches over 1, and we need cubic inches and cubic yards. So I transfer cubic inches to the bottom, cubic yards right there. Okay, cubic inches, 1,000, one, wait a second, I didn't get that right. We need to add another um, thing right here. Okay, write this down. One cubic yard is equal to 46,656 cubic inches. Okay. So, one cubic yard, 46,656 cubic inches. So we get rid of those. So I take parentheses, 47,000 times 1 divided by the parent, the quantity, 1 times 46,656. Okay, 1.00, go to 1.01 .01, though, wouldn't it? Because, um... I was saying I didn't do that. Wrong. I have too many zeros with that. I did that wrong. There we go. Zero point ten. Thought that seemed kind of high. Okay. Last group. Thirty millimeters a centimeters. Now we're to the metric system. So thirty mm over one. And I'm doing mm and cm. That's why I told you to add that. So millimeters here, centimeters here. Okay, and we know that they're 10 millimeters to 1 centimeter. So the millimeters cancel. And that's 30 times 1 divided by 1 times 10, or just 30 divided by 10. That's 3. So 3 centimeters. Okay, now these last two can be a little bit tricky. 60 feet per minute as yards per second. Here's what you do in a, with this. You underline it. You're going to put 90 feet, but instead of just over one, it's over one minute. Now, you got feet and yards. You're going to need a unit multiplier for feet and yards. Okay, so since feet goes here, it goes down bottom, yards here. But then we need another unit multiplier to get the minutes to the seconds. So there are two that are needed. When you have four different units like that, you're going to need to use a, compl a compound unit conversions. Now you got minutes on bottom, so that needs to go on top, so I'll be able to cross out. You can only cross out of a label if one's on top, one's on bottom, and then seconds. Okay, so feet and yards. One yard, three feet. Minutes and seconds, um, one minute, 60 seconds. And then I got feet here and here, get rid of them. I have yards, I don't have yards anywhere on bottom, so that stays. Minutes I have, and then it's yards per second. So now you do your thing. So you have 90 times 1 times 1, close it, divided by parentheses, 1 times 3 times 60. 0 0.5. Now the label would be yards over seconds. Yards per second. Okay, last one. Hot air passes through a duct at a rate of 830 cubic inches per second. Okay. How many cubic yards can pass in a time span of five minutes? So you got yards and minutes. So first we set up that as a ratio, 830 cubic inches over one second. 
Now I see cubic inches and cubic yards. So I'm going to need a unit multiplier for to get the cubic inches to cubic yards. So cubic inches, cubic yards. But then I'll need a second, a third, a third unit multiplier to get my seconds into minutes. Don't put five though. Deal with the five at the end. So now you need a seconds minutes. So seconds is here. Minutes is here. Okay, so cubic yards, cubic inches. The cubic cubics are right here. Okay. So again, one cubic yard, forty six thousand six hundred fifty six cubic inches. Okay, seconds and minutes. You know, there's sixty seconds to one minute. Okay, then the cubic inches. See ya. Cubic yards stay. And then the seconds. See ya. So I evaluate that on my calculator. So parentheses 830 times 1 times 60 divided by the parentheses 1 times 46,656 times 1. You could just do divided by 46,656. The ones are kind of irrelevant. 1.07. Now, for labeling that, that's going to be cubic yards per minute. Now, you have five minutes, though, so that means you need to multiply that by five. Because that's for one minute. That's how many cubic inches can go in one minute. When we have five minutes, we just take 1.07 times five. 5.35. 5 